Good morning. Wait, why am I saying good morning? All right, let's try again. <laughs> hello, everybody, and hello, Sam. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Excited to be here. So thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for being on the Consume Media Vlogcast. As you know, Sam, you've been one of my all-time favorite clients since we met at your first, or the first time we worked together, Sales Loft. Now you're at Bark, two of my favorite clients, and you're you're, you're the, the, the part of it that we get to connect with. So I'm so happy that we get able to chat. And today, I want to learn a little bit about you. I want to learn about your journey, what you're doing in marketing, what you're doing in content, what sort of advice you have. And I really like to start this show by just asking you to tell me a little bit about your journey. Where did you come from? How did you land as director of content at Bark? Yeah, um, an interesting journey, to say the least. I fell into an EA position um, about six or seven years ago at this point, um, made my way to Sales Loft and then, you know, spent three years there as the EA and was loving everything about being at Sales Loft, but really wanted to change. And I had a natural draw to our marketing team. So I joined our marketing team, spent about a year there and then made a quick shift uh, and then found myself at Bark as a director of content. So um, it feels like it's gone really fast, but also I haven't haven't done it for that long. So it's interesting. <laughs> I love it. And I can tell you it was a great moment in the consume media plus sales loft history when you kind of joined that role in marketing because you helped make things tremendously more <laughs> organized, which was such a great, better experience for us. Um, and now at Bark, same sort of thing. You're helping everything move along, stay organized. And we just can't say enough about great things working with you. Um, so you've become the director of content at Bark. Um, how do you feel like, you know, it's not easy to continue to grow your career each and every year and ultimately land into a position you love. What traits do you have that help do you think elevate yourself in your career so far? Yeah, um, I think one of the things you touched on, um, I maybe sometimes to a fault, uh, love to keep things moving and keep them organized. And so I think that that attention to detail has always stood out to my, uh, my peers and all of my leaders as well. I think that they just, you know, they knew if they put me on it, I could get it done. And so I think that has helped my career path unfold the way that it has. But I think too, um, I am, very dedicated. And if I set a goal, I'm going to figure out how to reach it. Um, and so I think that that is another thing that, you know, I don't think I would have seen myself landing this role when I did and having the title that I do now. Um, if you had told me that when I first graduated and was in my first job out of college, I would have, you know, never thought it was possible, but it's been really cool. Um, and yeah, I think that those are probably the two things that I think stick out to others. <laughs> I love it. And, you know, always moving onward and upward, right? And it's not just about the role that you have, but the people that you work with. And you're fortunate to work with a wonderful, wonderful person with Titania. Uh, yes. I know you've known Titania a long time. Tell me about that and tell me what it's like working with Titania. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing. So, yeah, I met Titania at my first job out of college where I landed. I kind of fell into the EA position there with the CEO and Titania was doing some filming for us because we had like a weekly tech minute show. And so I kind of helped her uh, with those shows, her guests and organize that. Um, she actually uh, played a part in me finding my way to sales loft as well and made it made, you know, an initial introduction for me, which was amazing. Um, and I had always told myself if Titania ever reaches out and says, hey, come work at Bark, um, I would do it in a heartbeat. And so I was lucky enough to get a random text from her. And at the time, I really wasn't looking, but I told myself I wouldn't pass it up. And so I, I just couldn't. <laughs> I love it. And yeah. I mean, you work in content. Titania is also an expert in content, whether she's on screen or helping conceptualize it. What's it like? What's it like working with her? Oh my gosh. It's so, she's an incredible leader. Um, she, what we do at Bark is a very sensitive subject a lot of the times. And she has such a great way of speaking, not only to our team and our customers, but like to our entire community, um, always with such grace and such, you know, delicate when she needs to be. 
But on the flip side of that, she also reminds our team to have fun because what the work we do is heavy. And so she's constantly thinking of new ideas. Um, if you follow her on Instagram, you know, she's pumping out a ton of great content lately. And it's really, really helpful for me because parents are asking her questions constantly. And so it's just another, you know, source where we can find here's what we're talking about already. And here's what parents still want to know more about. And so she's a great generator of different topics for me to take to my content team for blogs and guides and all that kind of stuff. I love it. And that kind of sparks another question from me to you. And I'm going to take this question. It wasn't scripted. So you're going to answer it because you because I know you can figure out a good answer for it. But, <laughs> um, so at Bark, you guys provide you create content from the company with Titania being probably the lead influencer for Bark. You have kind of the personal branding content, but then you have another category of parents, parents who want to tell their stories. So how does that all work together? How do you take all these different types of content and have them play a role for you at Bark? Um, gosh, I mean, many ways. Um, I think one of and hopefully I'm answering this the right way. Um, <laughs> um, you know, the, the type of content where, you know, Bark is providing, we're, we are the thought leader is everything from like what apps kids are on to what websites they're trying to use, different trends that are happening on TikTok, all sorts of stuff. Titania is taking that one step further and creating all this video content. And then I think, you know, the parent content is testimonial type in interviews, whether it's, you know, a video interview or a written testimonial that we get from them. Um, we have an amazing, I, I don't, I don't know what we would do without this community. We have a parenting in the tech world Facebook group where we're constantly, I mean, over 300,000 parents are a part of this group. Um, and, you know, them sharing what they're looking for and the things that they need, like, how do I talk to my kid about X, Y, Z? And it's like, well, we don't have that yet. So let's provide that for them. So that's, hopefully what you were asking. And that was the right answer. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And it's, it's interesting for a lot of reasons. The content you create, as you already mentioned, it's sensitive content, right? It's sensitive, which is its own challenge. But another thing that is, I'm sure a big challenge for you is timeliness. Um, like I remember we were working on a video series about a year ago when I think we were writing a script about parental controls on Netflix. And literally between the time that the script was written and by the time we were filming, the process of how to update the parental controls changed. So like there's always updates. There's always things that you need to adapt. Yeah. What's that like? Um, the timeliness and the ever changing and the trends uh, that you have to deal with. God, it's it's nuts. We can't keep up. I was actually just slacking with my team earlier about getting something updated and we were going to use a different piece of content to help us update it. And we're like, but we need to check to make sure that that content is still right. Um, and so quarterly content audits. I mean, that's another great thing about our community team is they're constantly sharing our content as resources. So they're flagging if they see something that needs an update. Um, and thankfully we have a small but mighty team. So those changes get implemented really quickly, but it's something we have to be very cautious of because to your point, these things are changing all the time. Um, so yeah, we got to stay on our toes. <laughs> now, will parents ever like call you out in the parenting the tech uh, world uh, uh, community if like something is old or and that's kind of like a flag for you to update it? Is is that like a key way that you? I mean, I'm sure you have plenty of resources to learn when things are changing, but sometimes one of these 300,000 people are going to figure it out faster than your your RSS feed <laughs> sends you the information. Oh yeah, so, I mean, we have. People will write into our customer support, whether that's where they should be going or not, but they'll be like, hey, I noticed that this thing was incorrect. And so thankfully they do let us know and they surface it, but we do try to stay ahead of it. But to your point, you know, it's every, it's not just parental controls that are changing. It's not just the trends that are, I mean, a trend could live for a day on TikTok. And if we don't do it then, then we miss the opportunity. Um, so it's always being aware of, the changes that are going on, but also, um, you know, reminding ourselves that if we don't get it right away, it's not, I mean, we'll get it, we're going to fix it, but it might not happen as quickly as we'd like for it to sometimes. <laughs> so along with the challenge of it being a sensitive topic and the challenge of you needing to always have your finger on the pulse, you also, you know, 
that's kind of bark related, but also general marketing related, you need to stay innovative. You need to stay cutting edge with your content. What are the, some of the things that you guys are doing to do this? Um, I think leaning into video is one thing. Um, that's people, our attention spans are already short <laughs> these days. Um, and so really like one of the things that we haven't done a ton of, but I'm really excited about is leaning into YouTube shorts, like just very digestible, quick content that gives parents kind of like the TLDR version of, of what they want to know everything of. Um, and so I think that's one thing that I hope we are, you know, doing better than our competitors when it comes to video. Um, and I think the other thing is, um, like really listening to what they're asking for. It goes back to seeing what parents are asking for or talking about in PITW and knowing like, okay, this is something that's, that's either on the rise or it's already kind of started to, to be a big topic for parents. So I think that between, utilizing different forms of content, but also staying hopefully two steps ahead of the trends um, that we're, we're delivering there. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, there's so much. There's so much. <laughs> to do. There's so many different ways to tell the story. And um, I just love seeing all the new contents coming out of Bark. You mentioned video. I want to dive one step deeper because I, I, I may or may not make videos for a living. So <laughs> tell me how, how in the past have you guys used video and how are you using it currently? And maybe if there is an insight or, you know, how are you going to use it in the future? Yeah. Um, well, I think the the fun thing is I came in kind of at the peak of the, the SEO video series that y'all were doing before I got here. And so those videos have proven to be the type of content that like when our viewers are on YouTube, that's what they're looking for. Like, sure, they want to know about Bark, but when you look at the analytics on the back end of the videos that are getting the most engagement and the most traction. It's, it's those SEO videos. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember. There was one that took off and I can't remember which one it was, but it, I was like, I didn't know that people were so curious about that one thing. Um, and so I think that like just in my time at Bark, since that's been the, the biggest video project we've worked on, um, it stands out as a favorite. And I think it's one that has proven very successful for us. Um, I think one that I'd like to get into, um, is a feature series. Um, sometimes people have a hard time understanding all that Bart can do. We're not just a screen time. Like we, we don't just do screen time. We just don't monitor. Like we do so many more things. And especially now that we have the Bark phone, you know, you can remotely shut off all the apps on the phone or turn the internet off in one click and being able to show that to parents so that they can understand I could like one click is all I have to do to to disable something on my kid's phone so that they get back to their homework or, you know, they just take the break that they need from the screen anyway. Um, I think that would be huge because we can try and talk about it all day long and write it a million different ways. But people being able to see those features in action would be huge. I love it. And that was my uh, my few seconds to shine having you talk about video, but whenever I talk to you, Sam, you know that it really warms my heart. The fact that consume media does do work with bark because of the mission. I love working with software, you know, B2B software companies. I love working with insurance companies, but the mission that you guys have at bark, it's, it just makes us feel good when we're working on your project. So tell me like, had to be some sort of reason why you joined Bark, and how does it feel to really just be working for such a powerful and important mission? Yeah, it's interesting. I like I said, I, I joined originally because Titania reached out to me, and I was like, "I've this has been a dream of mine." Um, it, it's no secret to my friends uh, that kids are not on my life journey, um, so I wasn't. I knew I was going to be passionate about the product. I, I like I, I knew what was happening at Bark was huge and important. Um, it was not until I think I was like a month in and uh, there was a, a post in this PITW group talking about how a Bark alert literally saved her child's life. And she got a, a real call from an actual Bark employee that said, we're afraid that your son is in imminent danger and we need to make sure that he's OK. And I just got chills thinking about it again. But like you don't 
think that those are the kinds of things you're going to deal with on the day to day. Um, and I've been here for almost, it'll be a year next month. And the amount of times that I've read things that are like bark saved my family's life or they saved my child's life. Um, you know, they, we just catch things that parents aren't always going to catch. Um, and it's, it's empowering. And I have friends who are starting to have kids who are constantly telling me like, I don't think you understand how important it is what you do. And um, so hearing it from, you know, my friends, my family and our customers, like it just, I, uh, I'm forever grateful that I get to be a part of something as big as what Bark is. It's really, really, for lack of better words, amazing. <laughs> it's, it's so true. The internet, the world, there's so much good out there that you have access to on your phone, but there's so much scariness there. There's, and the fact that you guys are able to help filter out the scary items, um, and really give the parents the control too. you know, it's not like this is the one size fits all approach. This is how you're going to do it. You really give the parents the control to do what makes sense for their values and for their kids, depending on the age. And it's, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, so, so love again, every, I tell you this every time I work with you, <laughs> it's just, it's a feel good feeling. It really um, is. Of working, of working with, with you and Bark. So just a couple more questions and, and we'll wrap this up. But, cool. um, I always like to ask, what are some life lessons you've learned along the way since you started your career that have helped lead you that you think could help somebody else who wants to follow a similar journey? Um, I think the the one that's kind of been a common theme through our conversation is leveraging connections. Um, I made sure to stay in touch with Titania my entire career um, because I knew that that was going to be important. My first CEO that I supported is still my mentor today. When I'm going through big life decisions, he's one of the first people I call outside of my mom. Um, you know, like those people, those relationships are very important. Um, you know, and I think it, it's, a, it's another point. Um, as you know, Kyle Porter just stepped down as CEO and I was invited to be a part of his like send off celebration. I supported him for three years. Of course, you know, I love the relationship that I was able to form with him and I learned a lot from him, but that to me, I was like, I get to be invited to his celebration. Like that's cool. Um, so I think, you know, when you find leaders who you want to be like, stick with them and learn from them and, and, you know, take advantage of those relationships. If they're willing to invest time in you, take it. Um, I think, you know, taking a risk. Um, when I left Sales Loft, it felt like a risk to me. Um, and when I was only at my, you know, little mini job for there, I was there for six months and I was like, is it going to look bad on me to leave after being somewhere for six months to take another opportunity? And it has absolutely been worth it. Um, so I think that that, you know, take the risks. Don't feel like your resume or your LinkedIn profile has to be absolutely perfect. Um, because especially in today's world, you, you might be somewhere for much shorter than you, they planned on. Um, and then I think the other thing I've learned, especially about myself is like, don't sell yourself short. That's cliche, but like, I have to constantly remind myself I'm in the position I am because my leaders trust me to do it. Um, and so if you're, if you're in that same position, don't, you know, get down on yourself for little things. <laughs> I love it. Sam, this has been a, a wonderful conversation here today. I'm, I'm so happy that you were able to join us on one of our first ever consume media um, vlog cast, as we're calling it. I think we invented <laughs> that word. If not, I haven't seen it before. So I'm going to take some credit for it. Um, Sam, if people want to learn more about you or learn more about Bark, where would you direct them? Um, well, you can find me on LinkedIn. It's just Sam Springfield. Thank, I mean, it used to be Sam Smith, which would have given you many more results. Um, and you can find Bark um, at bark.us. Um, check us out, especially, I think any everybody should check Bark out if you have family with kids, cousins, whatever it might be, but especially parents, guardians, grandparents, like, please, if you're not using something like Bark, 
one, I hope it is bark that you're using, but two, um, just take the time to think about what's out there um, and protect your kids as best you can. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for your time here, Sam. Thanks. It was a blast. <laughs> Let's do it again sometime. Sounds good. <laughs>